That's a grizzly, and that's me. But the journey to photograph this apex predator wasn't such an easy one. When I traveled to Yellowstone, I was not prepared for the incredible week ahead. This is the journey of struggle and triumph to photograph Yellowstone wildlife and North America's most dangerous predator. But how did I get here? I traveled over a thousand miles to meet up here in Yellowstone with Watts Wildlife. This guy knows all things about Yellowstone wildlife and is famous for his wildlife photography videos in Yellowstone. So this week, I'm gonna be traveling around with him to shoot larger animals than I normally do. Let's see if you can keep up. After arriving and setting up camp, we went to bed and got up early at the crack of dawn the next morning to venture out to Lamar Valley. We started our first morning out with a pair of bison making their way up the road. Evan and I started getting some shots, but as soon as I saw those mountain peaks in the background, I knew that my goal for the day was to capture a shot displaying a mountain peak behind one. We stayed ahead of their path and let them walk towards us, getting some cool moments with these massive meatheads walking close by. Still, not quite the shot I was looking for, but headed in the right direction. We headed back to the cars and drove our way through a bison herd and found a stunning pond of water to photograph at. Immediately when I saw it, I knew that the first shot that I wanted was of a bison reflection beside the still water. As a bison passed close by, I got a shot that wound up being one of my top 10 from this trip, as you get a beautiful scene around the bison reflected in the tranquil water. I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments and what your favorites are from this journey as we progress through the video. While we were there, a pronghorn strutted by to say hello. I didn't get anything I particularly liked of it as I struggled with the more simple scenery and the color of its body, but it was a cool sighting nonetheless. Behind us and up on the hill, there was a group of bighorn sheep hiking up the mountain but no good shots of these guys either. Out in the distance, some unbelievably cute bison babies were found running around. They pranced around and followed their parents closely, playing tag with the other kids and feeding on the grasses modeled by their parents. Hopefully, the young bison won't be modeling this behavior anytime soon though. Bison were everywhere, and this was just but a fraction of the bison in the Yellowstone area. It's amazing to see how they've come back from just a few hundred left in the late 1800s to now many hundreds of thousands once again. So if you see the, the lone calf right here, I'm pretty certain that he is, he's lost his mom. Um, just based on how he's acting, you know, he's kind of just standing there off to the side alone and not really doing much. Evan had shifted my attention out to a lone calf nearby us and just across the pond. The poor little guy had probably gotten lost and was now out on his own with no one to look after him. In hopes of surviving, he follows the herd and hopes to be reunited with his mother once again. But there are no guarantees for him out in the Yellowstone wilderness, and there are predators on the loose. Today, we are lucky enough to get our hands on this telescope from Decouvier, who's the sponsor of this video. Yellowstone is a really vast expanse of space where things are sometimes miles away, and being able to see them up and close really well with a telescope is just awesome. For example, right now, we got some bison and some bison calves that we've been looking at, and with this telescope, we're able to see them much more detailed and up close than we ever could, even with our wildlife photography cameras. Dang man, that is insane. That is all the way out there and you're seeing it through the phone that close up. That's pretty impressive, that type of zoom. It's pretty amazing. A little ways up the valley and a few hours later, we spotted our first grizzly. I parked as fast as I could and I made my way out into a decent position. He was far off, over a quarter mile out, but Evan and I hoped to predict the direction in which he was heading. What made it even trickier to get footage was his head dug under the bushes as he dug through the ground way out in the distance. But hopefully he would make his way over to us. As this happened, a pair of coyotes sprung up out of nowhere. While the grizzly wasn't anywhere nearby, these coyotes were. So I followed them for a bit and got to watch them walking along the river line. 
They were either hunting or scavenging for something to eat, and as they got within a reasonable distance, I wound up taking an image that I decently liked, framing him in the top corner. Back to the grizzly, he was making his way in the direction that we were, but then as soon as I was getting my hopes up, he turned around and left. Way too far out for a good image, I had missed my shot with the grizzly bear that I was hoping for. But luckily, it wouldn't be my last encounter of the trip. By this time, it was already getting late, and so Evan and I wound up splitting up and heading back to different sections of the park. As we were driving, there happened to be a herd of bison coming right up the road in a few groups. One walked right by us, but there was another that was running along the side of the road, separated by a ridge. I quickly scrambled out of the car and got a shot off that was wider and environmental, but the scenery wasn't too nice to make it anything amazing. In a closer encounter with the bison up the road, I was able to grab a close-up of a bison calf and its parents close by, along with a few bison napping. It's incredible how huge these guys are in person so close up. As the evening approached, I walked out into the wilderness and noticed a sandhill crane out in the distance. This is a new treat for me as where we have them in California, they stick to open marshlands that are far from as scenic as these settings. I decided to take my chances with this guy and tried to get some wider scenic shots while he was far off. Nothing was quite panning out how I had wanted though, so I decided to make my way over to a pond nearby in hopes that he would continue walking in the direction he was headed. Sure enough, less than half an hour later, the sandhill crane approached, and I wound up getting another encounter with him. I noticed during this time that he was continuing to call to his mate a mile or more away. These calls were shared back and forth, and as he walked around foraging, I got opportunities to take some of my favorite images I have ever captured of a sandhill crane in a dark and moody forest scene and these would be another two from my top 10 shots of this adventure. After spending some time with me, he was called back home to his mate and took off flying far into the distance, not to be seen again. The next morning, Evan and I made our way up to Hayden Valley, a whole different landscape, still covered in a decent amount of snow during the month of May. At sunrise, we stopped by to get some stunning cloud color in the sky across a pond. But really, nothing much happened here. I split off from Evan for a bit when I heard about a family of Harley Quinn ducks in Hayden Valley. I've always wanted to capture the striking colors and pattern of a male, but have never had the opportunity to do so. They were out off the side of a boardwalk, but I had to be careful as I made my way as eye level as possible with the water because of the snow overhanging the river. Eventually, I got settled and waited for the Harley Quinns to come close by. Unbelievably, they made their way over to a rock that was 20 or so feet away from me, and I wound up getting another top 10 shots of the trip, with this image here of a lone Vocaball reflected in the water opposite the curled up Harley Quinn. Loving the results of this image, I started to work with some slow exposure techniques to try and nail a completely different and creative image of the bird. Close up and zoomed in at 600 millimeters, this became really difficult as the birds move way more than you'd expect when standing there. To get a correct motion blur in the water that I liked, I was down to half a second exposure on a three second timer, repeating the shot over a hundred times. While some of these were fun and showed off the motion of the preening, when a pair of ducks moved out onto a distant rock was when I really got the image that I liked. With this image, I captured the whole rapid scene flowing by me and the pair of Harlequins, male and female, off in the distance, making another top 10 photograph of the trip. Now that my leg was frozen numb from being submerged in the snow the whole time, I made my way back to meet up with Evan, who had just finished filming a trio of grizzlies that had taken off. I couldn't believe that I had missed an opportunity to photograph grizzlies once again, but we decided to trek on down to the geothermal area of the park. That is, until we got stopped by a bison herd blocking the middle of the road. We hopped out quickly and got some shots here of the bison roaming by and the cloud cover sweeping the land. Evan showed me up in some of the shots we got here, so make sure to check out his video at the end of this one. But I got some that I decently liked as well. The day was getting late, 
but since we were in Yellowstone, I couldn't help but visit the Grand Prismatic Spring, a landscape photographer's paradise with all the colors painted into the hot springs. I pulled off a few shots that I liked quite a lot, and the cloud displays were amazing in the middle of the afternoon. During our final night here, we decided to whip out the telescope to take a look at some celestial objects in the night sky. It made for a surreal sort of way to end our last night camping in the nation's oldest national park and brought me back to what it must have felt like to look up at the wild sky all those years ago. If you're interested in purchasing the MC80 telescope, check out the link in the description below and thanks to Decouvier for providing this experience for us. On our final morning, I took Evan out to the same place I had seen the sandhill crane the other day in hopes of seeing one return. The scenery was stunning here for photographs, but unfortunately, none returned or were heard. We did get to spend the morning with some green-winged teal and mallards, and we got some close-up encounters with the mallards in the reflection of the water. It was a peaceful and serene morning sitting by the pond side, and little did I know that later on that day, I would have one of the most exciting wildlife photography moments of my career. Off to the Grand Tetons. What an amazing mountain range. I stopped by at the Snake River Overlook to snap photos of this majestic range that Ansel Adams photographed years ago. And while I was at it, I watched a common raven calling from the top of a snag with the Teton peaks behind it. This gave me an idea. If I was able to find a grizzly during my time here, I really wanted to capture it in a wider landscape shot with the Grand Tetons towering in the background. What a shot that could be. A while later, I got distracted by a black-billed magpie a little ways down the road. These birds are common here, but I don't get any of them in my area, and I've always thought that they were gorgeous. So I spent a half hour with them getting shots, flying around, and even at one point, approaching me close up for an intense portrait shot. Surprisingly easy, this wound up being one of my top 10 photos from the adventure as well, and I was glad I stopped by for these easy pickings. One more stop at another overlook, and man did these Grand Tetons look amazing. So I headed over to meet up with Evan, who is scouting out some locations for grizzlies. This week is the week in which the season warms up just enough and all of the grizzlies begin to make their way out of the den. Evan and I met up to discuss plans, then headed over to a place that he had heard of a grizzly being spotted. Not just any grizzly, but Grizzly 399, which is the most famous mother bear in the area. We waited around for hours, and the only thing that wound up coming through was a coyote. This provided for a cool encounter as he literally ran right by me, but it still wasn't the same as a grizzly that I had traveled 1,000 miles to come find. So, on a side note, today was my 27th birthday. The bear was not coming out, and there was little guarantee of it happening. So I headed out to enjoy a birthday dinner, while Evan stayed behind to wait for the bear. And as I would soon come to find, Grizzly399, in her 27th year of life, would step right out of the meadow in front of Evan to become the oldest grizzly mom on record to come out with cubs. I could not believe I missed my opportunity. Evan's patience had paid off as he had pulled off some incredible photographs of this historic moment that I had missed out on. Determined to make something of this trip, I headed over to a location in which a different grizzly bear named Bonita had been spotted in the open. As I arrived, there were swarms of people held back by the rangers to keep them at a safe distance. Getting a shot through the crowd was difficult, and I had never experienced such chaos between wildlife photographers before in my life. But I would soon be in luck as a thunderstorm started to roll in and the heavy rain cleared literally everyone from the surrounding area. I guess I was the only one crazy enough to stick around. And finally, all that was left was me, the bear, the ranger, and the earth as I sat through the elements waiting for my moment. I had traveled too far and too long not to capture this image. And as the massive grizzly turned in my direction, 
I fired off multiple shots to show off this stormy scene that I had finally captured my first grizzly bear photograph in. These images were top 10, but as the grizzly left, I knew that these weren't the perfect shots I was looking for yet. In the coming hours, I would get one more opportunity to capture the image that I had dreamed of with the Grand Tetons placed behind this powerful predator, and a closer encounter seeing the raw power of this massive bear. But that's for our next adventure. If you want to see part two of this adventure releasing soon, hit that subscribe button below. And if you want to see Evan's incredible historic encounter with Grizzly 399, check out this video here in the end screen.